In this video, we are going to see about an interesting PySpark interview question. This is a very popular one and there is a high chance that you'll be asked this question in your interview. Especially this is really popular among the financial or banking domain companies. So basically, this question is related to calculating the running total for your data. This may sound simple, but trust me, many people make mistakes while answering this question in interviews. Okay, now let's get started. As you can see here, I'm inside the Databricks workspace and here in the notebook, I have a code to create a simple data frame. It looks like this, which contains just two columns, ID and total. This is the data frame that we are going to use to perform the running total operation. Okay, so to understand what I exactly mean by running total is, firstly, let's have a look into the expected data frame. As you can see here, this is how the output should look like for this interview question. So basically, we have the same two ID and the name columns. The only thing is, we need to create a new column called running underscore total, and this column should look like this. So basically, in this logic, we need to calculate the running total for each ID group. What I mean by this is, as you can see here, in this ID column, we have two groups. All the rows which contains the ID value as one is a group, and all the rows which contains the ID values as two is another group. For each groups, we need to calculate the running total. For example, for the first group where the ID values are one, here the first row contains the total as 10. For this, the running total value should be just 10, since this is the first row. For the second row in this group, the total should be calculated by adding the current total value, which is 20, with the previous row total value, which is 10, and the final running total for this would be 30. Similarly for the third row, the total should be calculated by summing the current total value, which is 30, with all the previous row total values, which are 20 and 10, and the final running total for this row would be 60. And finally for the fourth row, all the rows in the group should be added, and the running total for this row would be 100. So all these calculations should be done individually for each group based on the ID column values, which means that this calculation should also be done for the ID values that are two. I hope that makes sense. Now let's see how we can implement this logic using PySpark. So for that, let me scroll down and this is the place where we are going to write our running total logic. Firstly, to implement this logic, we need to import two PySpark libraries. So for that, let me paste a set of code over here. As you can see here, in the first line, we are importing all the inbuilt PySpark SQL function. By doing it this way, we can pretty much use all the SQL function within Spark by using this F keyword specified over here. And then in the second line, we are importing the window function, which is the main thing to be used to perform this running total logic. Okay, now, as part of the next step, let me paste the code for implementing this logic and then I would explain how it works in detail. Cool, as you can see here, this is just a simple code to implement this. Here firstly, we are defining a window specification. In this window specification, we are using the window function that we have imported earlier with partition by id column. So what this means is, Basically, we are creating a window which partitions our data frame based on the ID column. For example, if you look into our input data, here the window dot partition by ID will divide this data frame into two partitions. All the rows that have the ID value as one is one partition and all the rows that have ID value as two is another partition. So as discussed earlier, the main reason why we are partitioning the data frame based on the ID column is because we need to calculate the rolling sum for each individual groups in the ID column. So that's the reason we are using this window function to partition the data using the ID column. Now, this rows between part in this window specification is the most important thing to implement this running total logic. But please ignore this for now. I'll explain shortly why this is mainly used as part of this code. Okay, now after defining this window specification, in the next line, we are creating a new data frame called df underscore transformed, which is based on our input data frame df. Here, we are creating a new column called running underscore total as per the expected data frame, which we saw earlier. 
And now this is the main logic for calculating the running total. So basically here we are using the inbuilt SQL function called sum. So to use this, we need to use F keyword as defined above. And as discussed earlier, we need to do the sum operation for the total column. So that's the reason we are specifying the total column inside the sum function. So for that, we are using f.call function over here. And finally, the most important part here is this OR of window spec operation. Basically what it means is this sum operation will be applied based on the window spec specified over here. This is the main reason where the running total will be calculated separately for both the partition of the ID column. Now let's discuss the rows between function. Here we need to specify two parameters. The first one is called the start and the second one is called the end. So after partitioning the data frame based on the ID column, this rows between function helps to define the start and the end row within a partition. Here the window.unbounded preceding means the first row in a window partition. For example, in the first partition, the window.unbounded preceding means the first row of this partition, which is this row over here. And in the other partition, it would mean the first row of this partition, which is this row over here. Similarly, the window.current row means the current row of the partition. So basically, this sum operation should be performed between the first row and the current row in a partition. So that's the main idea of this rows between function. Okay, now let's discuss how this code works for each row in a partition. For the first row, the window.unbounded preceding will be pointing to the first row and also the window.current row will be pointing to the same row. Since both are same, the same total value would be running total value, which is 10. And for the second row, the window.unbounded preceding will be the first row and the window.current row will be the second row. So for this, the total value between these two rows will be added together as the running total, which would be 30. Similarly, for the third row, the window.unbounded preceding will be the first row and the window.current row will be the third row. So for this, the total values between all these three rows will be added together as the running total and the result would be 60. And finally, for the last row in this partition, the window.unbounded preceding will be the first row and the window.current row would be the fourth row. So here, all the total values between the first row and the fourth row will be added together as the running total and this result will be 100. So basically, the rows between function specifies to perform the sum operation between the first row and the current row in a window partition. This functionality will also be applied for the second partition based on the ID column as discussed earlier. Now let's run this cell. After running it, let's display our new data frame df underscore transformed. As you can see here, we are getting the exact output as specified in the expected data frame. Cool, I think now you have a clear understanding of this running total functionality. As I said earlier, this is a very important interview question and also it is a very common transformation logic that you'll be doing as a data engineer. Especially this rows between function will be quite useful for performing multiple complex data transformation operation. Also one quick thing to note here is, Instead of this window.current row, you can also specify a value 0, which also represents the same current row in a window partition. If you run this code now, you'll get the same output as before. Cool, this is how we will be implementing the running total logic. I hope that's useful. That's it for today. If you found this video useful, please give a like, share and subscribe. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.